So I recently leaked, and it's been rumored on and off basically this whole year, to be honest, that RDNA 4 is unlikely to launch before 2025. I'm told that a big reason is Navi 31. Uh, the second you drop a five or $600 Navi 31 competitor, what are we going to do with the XTX stock we have sitting here that is at a loss, probably below 700, maybe even 800. So what do you think about that, though? The fact that their AMD might not have RDNA 4 show up until next year. That was my expectation based on what I was told in private dinners, let's say, at Computex. Um, so I spoke with a few people. They said they've tested it. They told me exactly how it's currently performing. And, and yeah, they, they were telling me CS announcement. That's what I heard until a month ago. And then someone insisted they got this briefing from product management and then they walked it back. So it's always possible. I mean, you know, th- they could move if. <laughs> well, they tested it. Like you said, I think they could launch it if they wanted to, but possibly. Yeah. I, I, I don't know where they are in that whole process of being out of, you know, release it into the wild. Uh, but yeah, it's possible that could get moved around depending on when they think the best time to strike is. But yeah, I was I was told CS, so that was my expectation, um, just because I heard it firsthand from a, someone who would absolutely know. But yeah, as you say, down the track, it could get pulled forward or get pushed back or anything like that could happen. But yeah, they were pretty down on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they were more towards being upset, like they weren't, like they're quite passionate about this stuff and they want AMD to do well. And they, they really wanted competition with NVIDIA. They don't want to, you know, this was obviously someone who deals with both NVIDIA and AMD. And yeah, they were, they were pretty disappointed with what they were seeing. So uh, I'm not, my expectations set on that are pretty low, but again, AMD hasn't set any expectations there. So I try to block all that stuff out and just be like, okay, let's, Interesting to know, which is why I don't talk about it on the channel or anything. It's like, that's interesting to know, but ultimately I'll wait till I have it in hand and I can test it for myself because, you know, you can end up going all over the place with with what the people, it, it seems pretty clear, right, that, that um, RDNA 4 just didn't pan out the way they wanted, a bit like RDNA 3, and therefore they're just abandoning, pushing it to the limits either because of diminishing returns or whatever, but it's it's going to be sort of yeah, a mid-tier product, which is disappointing. But yeah, hopefully they can turn it around. I know they've announced that they've changed strategies and all that, but let's be honest, the second they can take the crown, they'll they'll go for it. Uh but yeah, they're just not in a position the the current sort of chiplet approach unfortunately hasn't really worked out as as well as they'd hope. Oh, so you think the chiplet thing they were working on didn't pan oh, out? Uh, look, I, I, I don't know. I've heard a few different things, but it seems like some, you know, that that's a key feature of th- this approach, this architecture. And again, I'm almost making things up as I speak here, but it seems based on the information I've heard that it just it didn't scale as well. Like it, because and that makes sense, right? Like if RDNA four could be realistically scaled up to challenge. NVIDIA at the high end, they're not going to be like, nah, we just don't want to do that. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. They're only changing strategy because they have to. The key to success in the, the GPU business is basically top tier performance and features, which they've not really been able to achieve either of those things to, to the degree they need to anyway. But yeah, if they could scale our DNA 4 up to really give NVIDIA a hard time, um, they would do so, right? Hopefully, the good news is eventually that maybe this could happen again. Um, Compressed AI Blocks writes and says, guys, UDNA seems like the completely logical next step for Radeon and what AMD wants in the GPU market. Do you think it'll be more successful, that is, merging architectures this time, than GCN was due to AMD being a much more healthy position compared to 10 years ago where they just literally couldn't afford to keep making high-end cards? Secondly, do you think NVIDIA is now so entrenched to do their software and feature lead in the space that AMD might make some inroads, but a majority of the market just isn't going to leave that ecosystem. I guess there's two questions. The first thing I'd say is, the thing that excites me, or something I was very outspoken about when I saw the UDNA thing, is, all right, well, now they don't have an excuse. If they only have one architecture, and the architecture can do gaming and compute, and they make a $5,000 AI card, 
now they have to, if it actually performs to a reasonable degree, launch at least some cut down version of that for gaming instead of having to decide, well, we have cDNA, should we bother to make the big RDNA? So that's something I'm excited about with uDNA, hopefully. But anyway, do you agree with that? And do you think AMD being in a more healthy position could help them this time? You would think so. I can't imagine it would hurt them. So they've they've got a better chance of making it work that much is true. But again, you know, it comes down to the architectures and yeah, we've said it was Zen 5. Like if it's not focused on on certain things that will help with gaming performance, then you know, it, it depends on how universal the architecture is. And, you know, AI models and things like that are quite different to Unreal Engines. There is some overlap and that's what NVIDIA's worked very hard on making that overlap work with, you know, the tensor cores doing stuff like DLSS and ray tracing and whatnot. But Anything's possible. They're going back to something they've sort of tried before, but they can do it differently, I suppose. So it's not something radically new they've never done, but it's also not the same thing that's not really working. Like they, they gave it a shot. It's not it's not really working. So yeah, I mean, my fingers are crossed. I think we'll have to see, but I, I at least hope that this means that there just is an excuse anymore. But um, let's say it is good. Let's say there is some high-end card. I mean, do you think... I guess this is hard though, right? Because we're talking about like a hypothetical of a hypothetical at this point. Like, but how entrenched do you think it is now? Let's say, oh, surprise, this was the biggest mastermind behind the scenes sleight of hand in history. There is high end RDNA 4. It does met, beat the 5090. Let's say it's 2000, like 2500. Let's say they're the same price. They're both $2,000. Amy's 20% faster. Would people switch or do you think they'd stick with NVIDIA's ecosystem? Uh, you, you, like, you're not going to see a universal shift. It's it's rising again, right? In my opinion, and I, I think I certainly had the opinion of the vast majority of people who were sitting back and watching this play out, was that, you know, Ryzen was a long shot. Like it was going to be so hard for for uh, AMD to turn it around and, and start beating Intel in sales. And you can say, you know, Intel had their fab issues, which you know, they've still got ongoing fab issues and, with the NVIDIA thing, it's different because NVIDIA is so diverse and, you know, they're, they're very heavily invested in the software side of things. They they use TSMC just as AMD does, so there's no real advantage there. It just comes down to the architectures and uh, NVIDIA has a very good architecture. So, but as you say, if they, if they end up making something that's 20% faster, it's like, let's say it's universally, it's objectively better, then yeah, I mean, they will win. Anyone who has you the... You think object- the DLSS advantage, people would say, whatever, FSR 3.1 is fine. I mean, the the assumption there is that that keeps developing as well to the point where... Or, sure. I think I think that is going to happen anyway. But what if it happened right now? Like right now? Well, it would be the Ryzen moment, right? It would be the, the, right. the catalyst for the turning point, like... It would it would get it, there's certainly people who would buy Radeon if it's objectively better. Okay, and there'll be people who are like because I remember I remember talking to people back when uh, it was probably around Zen two came out and you could buy a twenty seven hundred X for like one hundred forty dollars or something. I think it was it was next to nothing. My brother got one for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, had, you had to pay twice as much or something for the Intel equivalent. I had people who were like, "There's no way I'm buying AMD CPUs. They're so bad." And they were, you know, spending way, or they were buying an equivalent Intel processor that was nowhere near as good as in terms of pricing. Um, so, and then that was a thing. And it, as time went by, there were fewer and fewer people who weren't willing to give Ryzen a shot. And, you know, the deal was sealed with like a 5800X 3D. Yes. Um, y- you had to be very heavily in denial to not, you know, realize that they were exceptional CPUs in terms of performance and power efficiency. You, you've got to start somewhere. It's the same thing what we're talking about with Arrow Lake, right? Like Arrow Lake has to be good. It just, it, it has to be. There's no other option. It has to be good. Um, they have to take a hit on the margins. They have to. Like it, it has to be competitively priced. They have to win people over to to the Intel platform. They have to get people basically accepting Intel again, that they have to do that. And then the next step can occur where hopefully they can continue on and rebuild the brand and away they go. And that that's what Radeon needs to do, but hasn't been able to do. So, 
yeah, look, that that wins some people over. And then if the next generation again is very, very competitive, then you know they'll they'll win more people over. And at some point, it would be a competitive market. All Jesse wants is for Maurice to play with her more often. But unfortunately, he just does not give out playtime or kisses for as low of a rate as she does. And I think she's just going to have to deal with that. But do you know what you don't have to deal with? Paying too much for Microsoft software if you go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com and their back to school sale. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, office products, or even many of the latest games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product this community deserves amongst endlessly elevating component costs. Fair pricing on Microsoft keys is one thing that we at least should get, I think. And you know, the Moore's Law is Dead team has been working with cdkeyoffer.com for a very long time. And that's because they're good to me, good to Dan, good to about a dozen family members of friends of mine that have used their services. And they've been really, really good, most importantly, to the Moore's Law is Dead community. So support this channel by using offer code broken silicon to save 25% off Microsoft software or you can also use die shrink to save 3% off everything else on the website like games using either of those codes really helps the channel a ton and it helps save you money. So use those codes broken silicon and die shrink at cdkeyoffer.com today.